Hi, my name is Brianna Snyder and I'm a BCBA with Brett Denovian Associates. In this video today, we're going to talk about matrix training. When you think of a matrix, what is your first thought? Do you think Keanu Reeves in the matrix or do you think matrix training? If you're watching this, fortunately for you, as long as you're here for the ABA knowledge, we're talking about matrix training. This video will cover fifth edition task list topics G11 and G21. Matrix training is a generative teaching approach in which words are arranged in a matrix so that some phrases are taught and others emerge without direct teaching. Research has shown matrix training to be effective in generating emergent multi-word tasks and can be used to teach listener skills. Other examples in which matrix training can be utilized include teaching learners how to spell and engage in sociodramatic play. Matrix training can be used to teach more than just verbal behavior, but for the purpose of this video, we will be mainly focusing on language. In order to understand matrix training, it is important to touch on generative learning and recombinative generalization. Generative learning occurs when previously acquired skills accelerate the acquisition of other skills without direct teaching or a prior history of reinforcement. An example of generative learning is behavioral cusps. Behavioral cusps are any change in behavior that allows the learner to contact new contingencies. A behavioral cusp exposes the learner to new environments, new reinforcers and punishers, new responses, and new contingencies. For example, when a child begins to omit a coic, tact, and listener behaviors, new mans and tacts can be acquired without direct teaching or a prior reinforcement history. When new combinations of verbal behavior emerge, the child is able to access new contingencies in the environment. When a learner has the ability to successfully utilize these behaviors, they will be able to engage in social interactions with peers, thus contacting new reinforcers. Recombinative generalization is defined as the differential responding to novel combinations of stimulus components that have been included previously in other stimulus contexts. The components of trained combinations are arranged in new combinations based on environmental requirements. For example, a learner previously learned to respond green triangle in the presence of a green triangle an orange square in the presence of an orange square. Without any prior learning history, when presented with an orange triangle, the child was able to respond orange triangle. If a child is able to accurately respond to orange triangle without a prior learning history, recombinative generalization has occurred. Another example would be using matrix training to teach prepositions expressively. A learner previously learned to place a fork to the left of a plate when instructed to do so, and a knife to the right of the plate when instructed to do so. Recombinative generalization has occurred if the learner is able Able to place a fork to the right of the plate without any prior learning history. When targets are arranged in a matrix and you teach along the diagonal of the matrix, skills are acquired without direct teaching. Thus, this makes for an efficient teaching strategy, especially given that most of us clinicians are pressed for time. This is not to say that you should cut corners by any means whatsoever. Training down the diagonal of the matrix allows for exposure to all stimuli the learner will encounter in generalization probes. This is just a perfect example of an effective and efficient way of teaching multi-word phrases without having to teach every single phrase separately. Another example can be found in Axon Senato's article regarding matrix training. They taught preschoolers with autism to follow instructions to perform action picture combinations. There were six actions on one axis and six pictures on the other axis. The instructions along the diagonal of the matrix were trained and instructions outside of the diagonal were probed for generalization. This study demonstrated that matrix training is an efficient and effective approach when teaching language and literacy skills. Matrices can come in all sizes as long as two concepts are being taught. For example, a two by two matrix can be used to teach colors and shapes. On one axis, there will be two colors. On the other axis, there will be two shapes. So, in total, there will be four color-shape combinations. If two out of four combinations are trained, the other two should emerge without direct teaching. When setting up a matrix training program, you must first determine what it is you'd like to teach. Pick something that is individualized to the learner and is a functional skill. Once you determine what it is you're going to teach, decide how big the matrix is going to be. It must be at least a two by two matrix, meaning there should be at least two variations of the phrase being taught on each axis of the matrix. Each axis of the matrix should be one category. For example, one axis is strictly colors while the other axis is strictly shapes. Once the matrix is set up, initially probe all combinations. When conducting the probes, you should provide reinforcement for correct answers. If the learner is incorrect, do not provide corrective feedback. You can continue to probe the other combinations or if there is nothing left to probe, 
move on to something else within the session. If the learner is continuing to get the responses incorrect, you can still provide reinforcement for sitting at the table with you, attending to the stimuli, or for working in general. If the learner responded correctly to a combination during baseline and it was on the diagonal of the matrix, you do not have to explicitly teach this response. But it is important to probe the combinations often when conducting maintenance checks. Now that you have your baseline data, teach the first two combinations on the diagonal of the matrix. Teach the responses one at a time until they are mastered. Once the two combinations are taught and the learner has mastered them, probe for generalization by testing the other combinations in the submatrix surrounding the diagonal. If the learner did not generalize, you will need to go back and directly teach the combinations that were not generalized. As the matrices get bigger, it is important to probe more frequently. For every two responses taught from the diagonal of the matrix, you should probe the responses in the submatrix surrounding it. As always, you should continue to do monthly maintenance checks to ensure the skill is maintaining across time. This is a great teaching approach because learners are able to omit untrained responses that were not previously taught. This is a time saver for all of us who can never seem to find enough time in a day. Not only is it efficient, but research demonstrates that this is an effective teaching method. It should be noted that not every learner is going to benefit from this teaching method. If there are challenging behaviors that are impeding learning, I would not recommend starting matrix training. Your learner should have basic attending skills, have the ability to stay on task during discrete trial training, and be able to generalize. If you have a learner who does does not generalize easily, this may not be the teaching method for them. Thank you so much for watching the video. If you'd like to help us disseminate the science, please click the link below and subscribe.